Okay, so I want to start with an acknowledgement of country. So we recognise that Flinders Social Work operates on the traditional lands and waters of Ghana peoples and we pay respects to Elders past, present and emerging. We acknowledge their sovereignty um, and continued responsibility to care for country. And we respect the importance of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander knowledges, languages and spirituality and relationship with country. And we're committed to truth telling about the history of social work education and practice in South Australia and working in partnership with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and communities to achieve a shared vision for reconciliation. Um, so welcome everybody. Um, my name's Renee Summers. I'm the course coordinator for the Bachelor of Social Work. It's wonderful to have you here today. Um, Jackie has joined us as well, who's one of our enrolment and course advisors. So I need to head off at 11, but if you have any questions about your own sort of enrolment or study plan afterwards, you might like to jab grab Jackie, who'll be able to help you with that. Okay, so my role as course coordinator is, um, I guess, to oversee the Bachelor of Social Work and to, um, I guess, pay attention to the student experience, as well as support students in progressing through the degree. Um, these are some of the other kind of teachers in social work that you'll work with over the next few years. So I guess today I wanted to say welcome to the profession of social work. Um, so I've put the Australian Association of Social Workers website up today. Um, you know, hopefully by the end of your degree, you'll be ready for social work practice and you'll have the knowledge, skills and values that are required for that, okay? Um, and our sort of key values or core values in social work are respect, social justice and professional integrity, okay? So over the next four years, you'll develop the, I guess, or learn the social work theories, methods and skills that you need to work alongside individuals, groups and communities, but also to address inequality and injustice. Okay, so social work is quite eclectic, so we draw on knowledge from a range of different disciplines. So you might have noticed that this semester you're enrolled in topics like sociology and psychology and um, social policy, which are all quite diverse. And that's because as social workers, we pay attention both to um, the individual or the personal, but also to the broader social context or environment, or to what we call the political. So it's about making connections between the personal and the political. So that's why we're asking you to learn about these different ways of knowing or different ways of looking at things. Okay. Um, and also hopefully by the time you graduate, you'll have the um, skills that you need to build effective relationships to work alongside people. So I guess I'd like to invite you now to think about yourself as a student social worker and as someone who's kind of developing their professional identity and their practice framework um, or your, your unique sense of or idea of social work. So this is about developing your knowledge, your skills and values. So we ask that you start engaging with each other and with staff in a professional manner. Okay, so because the Bachelor of Social Work is a professional degree, this means that when you graduate, you're eligible for membership of the Australian Association of Social Workers. So that's really fantastic and in many ways it kind of puts you ahead of um, graduates of other programs that are a bit more, um, that aren't accredited. Um, so it's a very positive thing when it comes to looking for work. Um, it does mean in order to do this, we need to meet accreditation requirements. So there are some expectations of staff and students that come with that. So for example, in accordance with the um, Australian Association of Social Worker requirements, students are required to attend on campus for 20 days of face-to-face -face learning. So even if you're enrolled externally or online, you will still need to come on campus for four topics that's in um, four or five day intensives across the four years. Okay, and we'll let you know about more about where they are later on. Okay, um, another accreditation requirement is that students do two 500-hour placements. Okay, so in third year and in fourth year, you'll spend six months where you're really focusing on placement and almost working full-time in a human service organisation. So that's a 500-hour placement and you do that twice. So it's good to think about that ahead of time because often students find 
they can't work as much as what they usually might during that time. Okay. Um, I also want to draw your attention to the inherent requirements. So if you go to the Bachelor of Social Work flow page, and I'm going to talk a bit more about what flow is and how to find it in a moment. Um, if you come down, you'll find a section on expectation and our inherent requirements are here. It's really important that you familiarise yourself with those. These are kind of our um, essential requirements that um, you need to sign up to before to and while you're enrolled in the Bachelor of Social Work. And I also want to note that students need to do a national police check um, as well as screening assessments through the Department of Human Services for working in the children, aged care sector and disability. So that's not something you need to do now, it's something that you need to do later on. But if you have a criminal history, that might impact on you. So it might be something to start thinking about and talking with us about now. Okay. Um, also wanted to draw your attention to our Charter on Professional Conduct for Student Social Workers. So that's also here on the Bachelor of Social Work flow site. Um, so this really sets out the expectations for how we um, relate to each other, um, how we deal with tasks in our work um, and how we manage ourselves in our work. So again, please make sure you familiarise yourself with that. Any questions about that before I keep going? I know this is a lot of information. Yes. With background checks, um, yeah. is it done through, sorry? Um, so don't worry too much about that now because we'll contact you about it a bit closer when you're heading towards field education. But it's for the... Um, the Department of Human Services clearance for working with children in aged care and disability. Any other questions before we keep going? Okay. So let's look at what you'll study. So this is the study plan for the first two years and the next two years of the Bachelor of Social Work. So if you want to access this study plan, you can just Google Flinders and the words study planner and then in the search function, you can put in social work and you'll access this. Um, so social work is a part of the College of Education, Psychology and Social Work. But in the first year, as I mentioned, some of your topics will be taught by other colleges. OK, so this, sem this semester you're doing Introduction to Social Work with myself. Um, introduction to Democracy and Governance, which is taught by policy, Psychology 1A, which is taught by psychology, and Sociology of Everyday Life, which is taught by sociology. So first year is about getting, I guess, a good grounding in that foundational knowledge, which in second year, you then build on it and develop sort of further knowledge of social work theory and methods. Okay, and then in the second half of the year, you'll do interpersonal skills, which is another social work topic. Um, that is one of the topics that has compulsory face-to-face -face attendance. So you can either do that on a weekly basis or you can do it as a five-day intensive where you come in and that might be particularly helpful for people who are interstate or living in um, regional or remote areas. Next semester you'll also do Indigenous Studies, um, Contemporary Health Issues in Australia and the Psychology of Surviving and Thriving. Okay, any questions about that? Um, I also wanted to point out um, the other topics which require compulsory face-to-face -face attendance are in the first half of second year and the second half of second year. And you can also see that the two big field education placements are in the first half of third year and the second half of fourth year. Okay. So if you're part-time or you've received credit because you've come from TAFE, your study plan might look really different to this. That's absolutely fine. If you have any questions about your study plan or your enrolment, um, please request support by us binders, and that will then be directed to one of our wonderful enrolment and course advisors like Jackie, okay, who can help you to work out the best study plan for you so that you meet the prerequisites and you're able to move through the degree as quickly as possible. Any questions about that? Okay, so let's look now at some of the basics you need to get started. Okay, first your student ID card, who's got theirs already? Awesome, brilliant. So if you go to um, Okta, so flinders.okta.com, 
you can click on order my ID card um, to find out more information about this. It's really important that you get your card because you need it to do things like borrow books from the library or to sit exams or to print, for example. Okay, so you need to get that sorted. The other thing that you need to do um, soon, if you haven't already, is to enrol in your topics. Okay, so to do this, go to students.flinders.edu, search for enrolment and you'll find some more information there or you can call our Enrolment Support Centre if you need help, help with that. Are there any questions about enrolment? Yeah, sure. So basically, obviously, like some of us are doing um, online and some of us yeah. are actually in face-to-face. -face. Um, I, I know the situation with COVID and that sort of thing, there's mm. a help and everything like that. So mm. what's, the, what's the thing of actually, is there like a waiting list that people who are online and want to go to face-to-face, -face, is, there, is, there, is that an option? Or, yeah, that's, or, a, that's a really good yeah. question. So. Um, in the SATAC guide, um, the external version of um, social work and the internal version are kind of listed differently. But once you enrol, you're all in the same course. So you can choose to take any topic on campus or externally, it's completely up to you. You just need to be aware that for those four topics, um, if you do them externally, you still need to come on campus for that week intensive. So you can mix and match. Um, on campus and online study. You don't need to be all online or all on campus and you might do one thing one semester and then change the next semester. Um, in terms of COVID, we've still timetabled our classes so there should be room for everyone. If you're wanting to enrol in an um, on-campus class and you can't, please let us know because you should be able to. So, yeah. Um, in terms of how we manage COVID, at the moment, all of our for this semester, all of our lectures are still online, taught by a collaborate. So once you get into flow, I um, mean into the flow site for each course or each topic, you'll find a little purple icon at the top that's for collaborate, and that's where you get in for your lectures. Collaborate's a little bit like Zoom, but it's got a few more functions, and it's our way that we kind of interact with each other in class. If you're enrolled in an on-campus um, version of a topic. Um, it should have face-to-face -face tutorials. So you might do your lecture online and then come on campus for your tutorials, okay? Obviously, if you're enrolled externally or online, then it's all online. If you're yeah. online, though, is there any chance of, like, because I know it's limited, yeah. is, there a, is, there a, is there a, like, like list to go on to that to say if someone drops out? Um, there should be room for everyone in an online lecture. So but what about face-to-face within the admin? The lectures, what I mean. oh, so we do those at our desk. Oh, so, right. so I'll be sitting at my desk talking oh. to my camera like I am now. There's actually five students now who are in Collaborate watching this lecture. So you'll be participating in the same way in your lectures this oh. semester. Then next semester, COVID permitting, um, we'll be back to face-to-face -face lectures. But at the moment, we're still kind of somewhat restricted this semester. Yeah. Yes, Jackie. Um, one of the chats just asked a question about recording. Absolutely, um, Karis, the Collaborate lectures are recorded and this lecture we're giving right now is being recorded as well. So later on you can go back into Finding My Way at Flinders and go down to live streaming and you'll be able to watch it there. Great question. I might just say, well, yes. if the student is enrolled in an entirely online topic, it's not in their timetable. Oh, excellent. Great, Jackie. So if you're enrolled, and I'll just repeat that to the microphone, if you're enrolled entirely online, that won't necessarily show up in your timetable because there's not necessarily a time that you need to be here on campus in the tutorial. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so let's keep going. So we've talked about enrolments. Textbooks. So you can use this website to find out what the textbook is for each topic. Um, the other thing I'd say is that today Flow went live, so you'll now be able to go in and look at the Flow site for each course. So if you go into Flow, sorry, for each topic, if you go into Flow for your topic, um, the lecturers or topic coordinators will have written in Flow what the textbook is for that topic. Okay, so it can sometimes be helpful to check because um, textbooks won't always be required or prescribed in some topics, they might just be recommended and there might be some other readings that are available in the electronic reading. Okay. Car parking, some of you have probably dealt with this already. So parking is free this week. 
but generally you need to pay for parking when you're on campus between Monday to Friday, nine to five. So if you go to findus.edu.au forward slash parking, um, you can purchase casual or long-term parking. Okay, scholarships, it's also worth pointing out that there's a wide range of scholarships available. You don't necessarily need to be a top performing student to apply. Um, so this is the website for finding out more information about scholarships. Okay, and Wi-Fi, one of the most important things you need to know when you're in a new place. Um, so the network is Eduroam. Okay, your username is your fan. So your fan will be the first four letters of your surname. So my last name is Summers, so my fan is S-U-M-M. -M. Um, and then there'll be some numbers that will come after that. Does everyone have their fan now? Seeing some nods, that's great, okay. And your password will be the same as your uni password. Okay, okay so let's talk about getting prepared. So what can you do this week? Okay, so if you haven't already, please do a campus tour. Um, Flinders is a big kind of spread out campus and it's easy to get lost here. So a campus tour is really helpful. Um, so these are leaving every hour this week between 10 and 3 from the plaza. Do you know what I mean when I say the plaza? So that's that big area down the hill where all the kind of food and eating areas are. Okay. Um, so definitely go down and check it out because there's also a welcome hub there this week where you can talk with um, staff and student ambassadors and they'll be able to answer some of your questions. So that welcome hub is also open between 10 and 3 every day. The other thing I wanted to say about getting lost, there's a really helpful app called Lost on Campus. So you might like to download that. And if you can't find your classroom or can't work out how to get from A to B, it can be really helpful to enter the room number in that and get some directions. And don't be ashamed or afraid to stop people and ask them if you're lost. I started at Flinders maybe a year and a half ago now and I got lost so many times in those first few months. So it's kind of part of your initiation. So um, don't get too flustered by it, just ask for help and use the app. Okay. okay, the other thing I wanted to mention is finding your way at Flinders. So this is a um, flow site and it's an orientation topic that you can do. It's really, really helpful. Um, we have a lot of really useful supports and resources for students at Flinders, but sometimes it can be hard to know where to go or where to start. So finding your way at Flinders has pulled them all together into this one kind of orientation topic and this one flow site. So it can be a really useful resource for finding out about anything from our counselling services to our disability services to um, academic skills to, you know, what to do in your first week, how to um, read, how to read a journal article, um, how to work on your assessments, where to get help for your assessments. So all of that is covered in finding your way at Flinders. So I really encourage you to take some time to work through that and sort of do the activities within that. I think that'll give you a really great start. Okay. okay. I also want to mention that respectful and inclusive behaviour is expected at all times at Flinders and this includes in our online environments and Flinders is committed to providing a safe and respectful learning environment um, and has zero tolerance for sexual assault and sexual harassment. Okay. So what else do you need to do this week to kind of get ready and to familiarise yourself with uni? Um, so if you haven't already, um, go in and explore Flow. So FLOW stands for Flinders Learning Online um, and it's basically our learning management system. So if you've come from high school, you probably had some kind of online platform that you used for communicating with teachers or for submitting your assessments. FLOW is similar to that, okay? So this is our um, system that we use online for managing your learning, okay? So you have a FLOW site for each topic that you're enrolled in. So I'll just show you for example, so each flow site will show up here as a card or you can have them in a list as well. Um, and you also have a flow site for the Bachelor of Social Work for the course that you're enrolled in 
and you'll also find one for finding the way it fended. Okay. So I'd encourage you to kind of work your way through each of those. Okay, I just want to briefly show you the Bachelor of Social Work flow site. Okay, so it looks like this. Um, you'll find a welcome and here are overview kind of the course and what to expect each year. There's a communication hub where you can communicate with staff. Um, there's more information about the expectations, about supports and resources, academic skills, academic integrity, assessment and field education. So you'll find a lot of useful information there. Um, and similarly, it's really important that you explore the flow sites for each of your topics. Okay. Um, the other thing that you need to know about is the topic information booklet. So once you get into flow for each topic, you'll find the topic information booklet. So that provides kind of an overview of the topic, of the assessment, um, information about how the topic is delivered, contact details for the staff in that topic. So make sure you um, download those and have a read through them this week. And the other document that is really important is this statement of assessment methods. Or often you'll hear people talk about them as the SAM or SAMs. Um, that can be found in the flow site as well. And the statement of assessment method is a little bit like a contract between you and the university about what the assessment is in each topic and what you need to do to pass the topic. So again, it's really important to read through your topic information booklet and your statement of assessment methods. And I know I'm using a lot of new words and a lot of acronyms. Um, we've already had a talk about Collaborate. Um, it's also really important that you use your university email account and that you check it every one to two days. And we ask that when you're corresponding with staff that you use your um, first and last name and your degree. So you might put Bachelor of Social Work student and also your student ID in the email. And that makes it really helpful for us because often people will um, email me and say, I don't know what's happening with the lecture, on my, the lecture next week. And I teach in three different topics. So then I have to email back and say, sorry, which topic was this about? So if you're just clear about um, who you are, what degree you're in and your student ID, that really helps us in following up any kind of enrolment or study plan questions. Okay. Um, the other thing that you'll find in your flow site for each topic is that it will be arranged in modules or kind of tabs and there'll be one module for each week. So if you're not sure kind of where to start in a topic like what do I need to do before my first introduction to social work lecture, go into flow, go to the week one module and click on that and it will give you kind of step-by-step -step instructions about what you need to do. Read this, go to the lecture, go to the tutorial. So it should be really clear about where you need to be, when and what you need to do. Are there any questions about flow or anything we've discussed so far? Okay, excellent, let's keep moving. Um, and I guess I'd like to say if you have any questions or if you're unhappy about something, your topic coordinator is always the first person to go to or the first person you need to speak with. Okay, so they kind of oversee the topic like Introduction to Social Work or Psychology 1A. Um, and if you have any general questions about your topic, say, um, how many references do I need in Assessment 1? The best way to ask those questions is by posting them on the discussion forum in Flow. So discussion forums are great because um, other students can see what you've written too. So sometimes if you ask a question at 10 o'clock at night, a staff member is not going to be there to answer it, but another student might be online, might actually know the answer to the question and reply straight away. It's also great because often we have the same questions, so you can actually see the questions that have already been asked and the responses. So um, we check the discussion forums daily during the week. So if you've got any general questions, that's the best place to ask them. If you have any questions that are more personal, say for example um, about an access plan or if you're going to be away for a period of time, then email your topic coordinator. And if it's something that's more personal in nature, then email is the best form of communication. Okay, so we're here to help you and to support you in your learning, um, but it, we often have much more flexibility if you get in touch with us early. So if you're struggling, let us know. Um, and communicate with us, okay? So we can support you and connect you to the appropriate services to manage that. Any questions about that? 
Okay, so let's talk about what's happening in orientation. Okay, so Flinders has an extended four-week orientation program, so it's not just in one week, um, it's stretched over the next month. So you can find out more information about all the events that are available um, at this website. Okay, there's some really fun sounding social events coming up as well. So again, see the same website for more information about these. Okay, and also there'll be a bunch of kind of orientation sessions that are available through the orientation website as well. So just go to students.flinders.edu.au. Okay, so you can find out more information there about using Flow, about um, how to work out what the textbook is, about understanding how assignments and grades work, about studying for success, about some of the supports available at Flinders, and also about managing your wellbeing at uni. Okay, um, you might also like to participate in one of our mentoring programs. Um, it can be really helpful to develop relationships with other students early on, particularly with a student who's been here for a few years and can show you the ropes. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, go to students.flinders.edu.au forward slash mentoring. Okay, so that's all the formal information that I wanted to get through today. Um, I wanted to save some time to kind of answer any questions or um, to kind of hear how you're going. So what do you reckon? Is it all a bit overwhelming or is it sounding okay so far? It's a bit overwhelming. Yeah, and I think that's completely fine to kind of feel a mix of emotions at the moment. I'm sure you're probably really excited about being here, but I'm probably a bit nervous too and it's um, unfamiliar territory. So that can, you, there can be a mix of emotions and that's completely fine. Any questions? Anything people can't find? Any questions about enrolment? It's very quiet. Such a good job. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we might wind up there, but I'll hang around for a little bit and Jackie will be here too to come and ask us if you've got any questions. And I look forward, for those of you doing Introduction to Social Work, I look forward to seeing you next week online in the lecture. So good luck getting everything sorted and do sing out if you need help, okay?